In section 3.3, we'll be proving that lines are parallel. Now this is the converse of 3.2. In 3.2, we started out with parallel lines, and then we found out things about the angles. In this one, we're going to be looking at the angles that we have, and deciding based on those angles, are the lines parallel? Now the first thing then, kind of like this, the last section, we're starting with a postulate. Postulate 3.2 is saying if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So what we do, if we go out and we make two angles the same off of the same transversal, and then we look at these two lines, if we force these two angles to be the same, then lines J and K are going to be parallel. Uh, the next theorem, the alternate interior angle theorem, is turning around what we did in the last section and saying if angles 1 and 2, alternate interior angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. Now, if we're going to do a proof on this, it would be very similar to what we did last uh, in the last section for the other proof. Uh, we're going to be using some corresponding angles, so we're going to need to label one, let's say this one right here. Now, we'll start with our given information. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Next, after we put that angle 3 there, we notice that we have vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So I'm going to say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Now I can also notice that 1 to 2, 2 to 3, so angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And that's the transitive property. Now notice 1 and 3 form a pair of corresponding angles. So we go back, if corresponding angles, then the two lines are parallel. So based on that, if corresponding angles are congruent, then our lines are parallel. So we can look at these two lines that we have up here, that would be J and K, and we can say K is parallel to line J. Okay, the next one is the same side interior angles. And these are going to be supplementary. We won't do the proof here, but it's very similar to the opposite proof that we did in section 2. Theorem 3.6 uh, is turning around the alternate exterior angles, and its proof is very similar to Theorem 3.4, the alternate interior angles, so we won't do that proof here either. Now here's an example that will show us how we might use this. You see which lines are parallel if angles 1 and is congruent to angle 2. Notice we don't know that any of these lines are parallel yet. Since none of these are marked as parallel, we can't make that assumption. All we have to go on is that angle 1, so let's mark that, congruent to angle 2. Now that we have those two angles marked, we looked at the lines that we're dealing with here. We're dealing with lines A and B with a transversal of M. We then look to see which special pair those are, and those are corresponding angles. And we notice since those corresponding angles are congruent, our postulate was if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Which lines? Well, we're talking about lines A and B. So we can conclude that A is parallel to B. Notice this does not tell us anything about lines in M because we don't have any of these angles up here. For our final problem, we're going to look at uh, we want to make the lines parallel. So we don't know that they are, we want to make them parallel. In order for them to be parallel, we have to consider what has to be true about the relationship between these two angles. Now if we look at these two angles, they are same side interior. And if we remember our theorem, in order to be parallel, we need these to be supplementary. So if they are supplementary, then the lines will be parallel. So we'll take them, we need them to be supplementary, so we'll add them together to get 180. That's going to give us 2x plus 120, which gives us 60. If we subtract 120 and if we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 30. So that answered our question. They asked for the value of x to make that parallel. If x is 30, then these will be supplementary and A will be parallel to B.